Everybody's waiting on breakthrough, right? How, do you want, well, how many of y'all want continuous breakthrough? Well, let me tell you something. Are you here today? Well, you broke through. <laughs> See, sometimes we ignore the simple breakthroughs, you know. <laughs> do you think the enemy wants you here today? No, man, so you broke through. See, you're either breaking through or he's breaking through to you. So we're either going forward in a continuous movement of going forward or we're going backward. So everybody got it? And so we want a continuous breakthrough, don't we? And there is an, a, a, an area where God is requiring us in, in, in this place where he, he's wanting us to look continuously forward. That's why it's important to live from the future, not from the past. Amen? If you're living from the future to the present, then you're constantly breaking through. You know, there are many believers who've accepted Jesus and are still bound. Many. They're still bound. They still have a tendency to be caught up in cycles and, and set limitations on their life because they've not, they've come to an area where they've broken through in one area, but they, they can't break through another. And there are requirements that God asks us to do to break through. We must break through. You know, if, if you've ever noticed that if uh, it rains and then there's, uh, you may have a bucket outside or something, well, the water, the bucket fills up with water, and a few days later, you know, it's still there, it's slowly evaporating, but it becomes stagnant. Next thing you know, there's mosquitoes being birthed. You know, stagnant water always bursts something nasty. And, and, and until you finally empty out that bucket, and, and when you empty out that bucket, it gets refreshed again. It can get refilled, doesn't it? So in this, that's why it's important that we must be, be refilled all the time. We've got to shake the dust off of the world that tries to put its dust on us so that our light doesn't shine. You ever notice that um, you, you, you finally... You realize that you go to a lamp, you're cleaning something, and, and you wipe down a light bulb that you didn't even realize was filthy. You went, wow, man, I didn't even know it was that dirty. And you wiped it off and more brightness came. Because you don't even realize that being in the world, we're always being contaminated. There's an area where the enemy is always trying to contaminate this. That's why Jesus said, shake the dust off the world. That's why he said, come out from among them. And we need to shake the dust off. And we shake the dust off by fellowshipping. Let me tell you, one fellowship a week is not sufficient to shake the dust off. It's not. It's difficult. Amen? So, let's go to James chapter 1. <clears throat> James chapter 1. Continuous breakthrough. We want continuous breakthrough. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. James 1 verse 12. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. blessed. Is the man who endures temptation. Now wait a minute. That word doer means breakthrough. It means what? breakthrough. Endurance is breakthrough. So everybody got it. If you're enduring, he says, blesses the man who endures temptation. Didn't say, blesses the man who got snagged in temptation because everyone's going to be tempted one way or another. It's bless the man who endures it. He goes, breaks through it. For when he has been what? Approved. When he's been approved, he will receive the what? The crown of what? The crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who what? Who love him. So understand that they're in an endurance, as your endurance is a sense of breaking through. In other words, you're going to endure. You're going to be patient. You're going to fight. You're going to break through. You're not going to give up. There's a difference. 
As long as you're not going backward, you're going forward. Even though sometimes it doesn't feel like you're moving. So everybody got it? Sometimes it might, it might feel like, man, you know, I just don't sense us. I don't, I don't sense me moving forward. But as long as you're not moving backward, you're breaking through. So everybody got it? As long as you're what? You're not moving backward, you're breaking through. Let's go a little further. Verse 13 says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away from his desires in what? Entire. So he's drawn away. How many all know the devil likes to draw you away? Amen. He likes to draw you back into the world. He likes to draw you back into old habits. He likes to draw you back into old relationships of corruption. He likes to draw you into the bat and your past things were, were false comfort. He likes to draw you into lust of the world. These are areas that he will draw you into. He'll like to compromise. Oh man, I, I used to be an alcoholic and I only drink once a week. I, I used to smoke cigarettes, but I only have it after dinner. All of these areas that he just likes to... See, he likes to bring a compromise. See, that's going backwards. In fact, the word says that it's an abomination to pick up those things or go back to those things you were delivered from. Hallelujah. It says, so then, verse 15, then when desire has conceived, in other words, when you've agreed with it, it gives birth to sin or the presence of evil. And sin, when it is full-blown or full-grown, brings forth what? Death. So the end result of the wages of sin is what? Death. So I want to encourage you today that no matter what you're going through, as long as you're not going backwards, you're breaking through. Amen? You're breaking through. Don't let the enemy deceive you. See, he, he likes to tell you that nothing is happening when it is happening. God's not sitting still. And, hello. 2 Timothy 3. Continuous breakthrough. You know, sometimes we, we, we neglect the simple things. We neglect them. We're not looking at the areas where God has brought us through. Just the simple things. You know, every one of us in this room, the devil has tried to kill multiple times. Well, you're still here. <laughs> the word says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, doesn't he? There are people who are hanging on by a string. There are people just hanging on. But let me tell you, if you hang on and don't go back, you're going to go forward. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 10. Would you read it with me, please? But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Lodiasm, uh, at Lestra, what persecutions I what? He endured. He what? He endured. So what happened? Did he break through? Yes. And what does it say? And out of them all the, law, the Lord what? The Lord did what? Delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live what? Godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Hello. Persecution is associated with temptation. You will also be persecuted because of your belief. We are being persecuted right now in our own country. Christians and Jews are being persecuted. It's global, but it's, it's, it's more out now. 
In fact, there's a party that persecutes Christians and promotes the darkness. People don't even realize it. See, if you're in a backslidden state, you're blinded. You're blinded. And you can't see. And you can't see the truth, nor can you see things all the way through. Verse 13. But what? Evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must what? Everyone say continue. 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 See, if you continue, you will always break through. You will always break through no matter what it feels like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what people are telling you. If you are continuing, you will break through. But, if you, but you must continue in the things which you have what? Learn. So you must put the things to practice, practice that you what? You learn. Is everybody learning? Man, we never stop learning, do we? We're always learning. Jesus said, come and learn from me. We're always learning. Man, we're learning every single day. Your trial and tribulation is for you to learn. But first, it's to expose your enemy. But so many people get caught in the trial and tribulation and go back instead of forward. But you must continue in the things that, which you have learned and been assured of, now, of knowing from whom you have learned them. Verse 15. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in what? Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man or woman of God may be what? May be what? Complete. 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 Thoroughly equipped for every good work. And every good work is an area where you are what? Breaking through. You're breaking through. Amen? So we're something that we must do, and that is continue in the things that we have Learn. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Is everybody there? 37.3. Let's speak it together. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Verse 5. Commit your way to the Lord Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, and do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. In other words, there's an area where we must trust, rest, and wait. Amen? And in this trust is where we feed on his faithfulness. We are trusting that he's able to complete what he started with us. Amen? We're trusting in that. And in that area where we're, rest, we're resting, we are leaning, actually. We're leaning on him. And in this leaning on him, we are resting in the wisdom he's given us to use. We're resting in the promises. We're resting in his love. We are now leaning on him. So we're trusting in him and what he has said, and we're leaning on him 
and everything. Does everybody got it? That's an area of rest. You know when you're rest, you lean on something. Yeah, man, I'm resting. So we're resting in him. Amen. And while we're waiting, you know what a waiter does? He serves. We're waiting. So while we're waiting, we are actually serving. Amen. And in this area of serving, we're waiting for the next command. Or we're waiting for breakthrough. Is everybody with me? See, there are three levels of breakthrough. Three levels of breakthrough. We are what we call the now term, the short term, and the long term. Three levels of breakthrough. The now term says, do whatever it takes right now. You got to do whatever it takes right now. Right now. What do you mean? Well, you do whatever it takes in the area of what you've learned right now. You may be going through something right now. You may be waiting for a breakthrough. Well, look at why you're break waiting for the other breakthroughs to come. You do whatever it takes right now. You may be waiting for a job. You take any job, whatever it takes right now. You do what you got to do now, right now. It's the now term. The short term is three to six months. And the long term is one year. So God is always preparing me and you. Sometimes you got to do whatever it takes right now for the job. Is everybody with me? For whatever it takes, some, something, sometimes there's things going on in your home and the Lord is saying, take care of this right now. Get rid of those accursed items now. Get rid of the alcohol. I, I had somebody come up to me and said, well, I thank you for praying for me. Uh, I, I, I didn't drink for a week. Well, that's nice. But uh, then the holiday came and I drank again. Well, did you have booze in the house? Well, yeah. Well, how do you expect to overcome? Get rid of the accursed items now. Get rid of the garbage now. That's what you got to do now. If you're involved in something, a fornication or something that's ungodly, take care of it now. Do it now. That's the now term. Then there's the short term. Well, what you're doing right now, God is preparing you for the breakthrough, which could be a three to six month period. It could be a promotion. It could be something else. And then you have the year period. But you got to do whatever it takes now, which will lead to three to six months, and then one year. Is everybody okay? So in this, we're going to trust, we're going to rest, and we're going to wait. But the key to this is to continue. To what? Continue. Luke 22. You know, it's like, I, I, let me give you an example on this. Um, there was a, a couple that was um, going to get married. And so uh, they decided, okay, well, we're going to get married in about a year, okay? But in the meantime, we're going to live together <laughs> because uh, we want to save our finances. We, does everybody understand this? We, we want to do this. We want to do that because they're looking at things of, Long term when they're not even taking care of things of now term. In other words, so uh, are you going to sleep in two different rooms? Well, that ain't going to work. You're going to end up falling, man. See, so they delay the marriage. Has God told you to get married? Yes, God told us to get married. Did he tell you to live together? Well, no. Well, we just thought it would be good here. See, now they're using carnal common sense and try to prepare their life instead of allowing God to build their life. So there's things that people need to take care of now. Now come out of sin. Now come out of ungodliness. Now come out of fellowship with darkness. Now. Don't just fall into it. Come out of it. Because that breakthrough, that other breakthrough won't come. Or it'll be stolen from you. Is everybody with me? 
Anybody with me? Cool. <laughs> Luke 22. So anyways, these people were telling me, you know, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to wait and do this and do that. I'm like, man, you can't do that. God's told you to get married and get married now. See, they're thinking carnally. Well, we need to save money while we're fornicating. <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke 22, carnal Christian. Where is the conviction? In verse 27, Luke 22, verse 27. Let's read it together. For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? This is the table of the Lord. Yet I am among you as one who serves. But you are those who what? Have continued with me in my what? In my trials. And I bestowed upon you a kingdom just as my father bestowed one upon me that you may eat and drink of my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Again, he says something very vitally important. He says that you continued with me in my trials. See, there's that area where we are continuing no matter what. No matter what's going on in your life, whatever trials... Jesus is in your trials. Is everybody okay? He's right with you. He's right with you to guide you. He's right with you. If you feel a slap on the back of the head, it says, get, hey, get it, wake up here. He's right with you. And if you haven't received his conviction, it's because your heart is hardening because you still want to do what you want to do. And that's a dangerous place to be. Very dangerous place to be. In Matthew 15. In verse Let's speak it together. Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days. Uh, how, how many of y'all have been continuing with the Lord more than three days? Well, then you know what? He's got compassion on you. So everybody got it. I mean, if he was willing to have compassion on them for hanging out with him for three days, how much compassion is he going to have on you for all of us who've been hanging out for a while? You know, one of the things the enemy always says is he's forsaking us. Oh, God, you can't. You blew it now. It's over. No, that's not true. He still has compassion on us. But there's something that we must do is continue no matter what. He said... I have co compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And I do not want to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. Why? Because when we're going through stuff, there's something he wants to do is feed us. He wants to feed us spiritual food to get strengthened. Amen? He wants to feed us from his throne room so that we can get strengthened. He wants us to drink of the Spirit so we can get strengthened, so we don't grow weary, so we can continue. Hebrews chapter 8. Continuous breakthrough takes something called continue. Has everybody got it? If you're not one who continues in the things of God, you cannot can have continuous breakthrough. Hebrews 8. Now, don't be confused on this area in continuous breakthrough. You're not going to wait for gold coins to fall from heaven to say, I got a breakthrough. Hello. Finances, yes, there's a breakthrough. 
But there's an area where your greatest breakthrough is not financial. Your break, greatest breakthrough is revelation in the riches of knowing him in relationship with him. So everybody got it. God is willing. Look, at, if you know him, you have everything. It's not always financial. People are always thinking, I need a breakthrough financially. No, you need a breakthrough into him. The enemy's got something between you and God. And you think that your financial prosperity has brought you through. No. Because most people in the arena with the financial wealth that has not been blessed by God walk in fear of losing it. People who walk in fear of losing it, they don't tithe. They'll give what they have. Okay. Yeah. I'm a good Samaritan. Not realizing because there's no conviction of God. There's a relationship is distant. See, God wants us in a close relationship now. Closeness. So close. That you know his presence. You know his unction. He doesn't have to say a word to you. You know what pleases him. You don't have to be told what pleases him. You know what pleases him. Amen? In Hebrews, in chapter 8, in verse 8, uh, verse 7, I'm sorry. For if that first covenant had been what? Faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers and the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not, what? Continue in my covenant and I disregarded them, says the Lord. So there's an area where you and I must continue in covenant. See, if you continue in covenant, those are the promises of God, aren't they? So if you continue in his promises... He's going to continue. So everybody got it. His promises will come to you. So everybody got this. This is vitally important. But we don't want to be covenant breakers. We want to maintain covenant. It's something that we must continue to do. It doesn't mean we won't make a mistake. Everyone here is going to make a mistake. And uh, you'll probably make a mistake today sometime. You might say something, think something, do something. And the mistake is not covenant breaking. There are things that covenant break and there are things that are mistake. Amen? If you say something stupid, it doesn't mean you broke covenant. But there are areas where you break covenant, like fornication and things of that degree are areas of breaking covenant. In Hebrews 4. Continuous breakthrough. Start at verse 1. Let's speak it together. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Now listen, the word they heard didn't profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. In other words, it didn't bring vision to them. So it was just bouncing off of them. They didn't grab it and let it become vision. They just let it bounce off. There's a lot of people, we call that listening. There's a lot of people who listen. You ever talk to someone and, yeah, you know. And then there are those who hear. There are those who listen and those who hear. When it bounces off, it's someone who's listening. That's all they're doing is, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I went to church. Okay, cool. Boom, boom, just bouncing off. And they're going back to do the same old thing again. That's called listening. That's not hearing. Hearing accepts it, mixes it with faith because there's vision. They see what, God, what pleases God. They repent. They turn from what they're doing, and they're going to go forward. That's hearing. So here they received, they, they, they listened to the word, 
but they didn't mix it with faith because there was no vision. That's why Jesus spoke in parables. It's to bring vision. It's to expose. It's to empower. It's to encourage. It's to strengthen us. Amen? Is everybody okay? And because they got the word, but they didn't mix it with faith, it produced no vision and didn't do anything. Is everybody all right? You got this. Good. Go to Acts 2 then. In verse 41. Uh, well, let's start at 38. Verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. So those who listen to the word without faith don't get breakthrough. Everybody got it. It's difficult for them. Because usually what happens is if you're not going forward, you're going backward. In verse 38, let's speak it. Then Peter said to them, Repent! And let every one of you be what? Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord God will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who what? Gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they what? They continually... They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers. Now, this is powerful because they, they received it gladly. And because they received it gladly, they got vision, didn't they? And there's something that happened to them. They decided to get involved. Amazing. They got involved. They said, well, you know what? Let's break bread. Let's fellowship. Let's follow. Let's, let's get together. You know, we got a new family now. I need to hang around with those who, are out of a, who call on a God out of a pure heart. No more two-face. Too many two-face believers. They call... Jesus in front of you, and they serve the devil behind you. Jesus knows them. You can't get away with my dad. So they gladly heard the word, and they followed. Because they received, they got vision, and it turned them another direction. Amen? In James chapter 1, did they have breakthrough? Yes! James chapter 1. In verse 23, uh, 22. But be what? Doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect liberty, a law of liberty, and continues in it and does not forget. He is not a forgetful hearer, but a what? Doer of the work, this one will be what? Bless him what he does. In other words, he'll have breakthrough. He'll have breakthrough. 
Hebrews 6. <clears throat> Hebrews 6, verse 9. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? We'll see. <laughs> People will be going out later. Man, did you hear that word today? Oh, oh, oh. oh you were listening. You weren't hearing. <laughs> Verse 9. Let's read it together. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation, though we speak in this manner. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become what? Sluggish. When you become sluggish, is that in the area of continue? No. No. That you don't become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So we got to be careful that we don't become sluggish, that we don't become in an area of compromise or complacent. In Mark 16. Mark 16. In verse 16. He who what? Believes, which means to what? Follow. That's somebody that's continuing, aren't they? And he who believes, he who follows, and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not follow will be what? Condemned. And these signs will follow those who follow. He said, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. In other words, breakthrough will follow you. Breakthrough will what? Follow you. Philippians 4. Philippians chapter 4. In verse 4. Let's speak it together. Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord when I feel like it. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord when he blesses me. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord when I get my way. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always, right? Again, I say rejoice and let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for everything. Be anxious for what? Nothing. Nothing. When you, be, when you sense that push, that's not dead. That doesn't push you. He leads you. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication. So what's something else we need to continue in? Prayer. Amen. That's making contact with the other side. Coming to church ain't going to help you if you're not in prayer yourself. Amen? But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God in the peace of God. How many of y'all know that when, pe when God's peace is there, there's breakthrough? 
which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and the minds through Christ Jesus. In John chapter 15, Continuous breakthrough. In verse 15, uh, chapter 15 and verse 1, would you all speak it with me, please? John 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Now, if you're not continuing, are you going to bear fruit? No. That, uh, but he's going to prune you. In this pruning, those are trials. Hello. Pruning is trials. That means you've been squeezed. Pruning are trials, tribulations, so you can bear more fruit. Well, that doesn't make sense. Of course it doesn't. It's carnal. That's carnal thinking. Whatever you're thinking naturally, God's doing the opposite. I can tell you that. <laughs> so he says, what does he do? He says, if, uh, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bear fruits, he prunes. He crushes. That it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Here it is. Are you ready? Abide in me. And I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Three areas of abiding, of course, is in his presence. That's through worship. Amen. Amen. In his word and through prayer. His word and prayer. Because you pray his word. And in fellowship. Three areas that we abide. Will allow us to continue and live a life of continual breakthrough. Has so everybody got that? In other words, in his fellowship is in his body. And I want to close at 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 18. Let's speak it together. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now men the Antichrist have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. And because of this, he's saying, listen, there's going to be a lot that's going to come against you. You've got to abide. We've got to continue no matter what. We cannot go by how we feel, what we see, what we hear. We must go by truth. When we sense ourselves being pushed, we cannot rely on our finances. We rely on him. Has everybody got it? We can't rely on our talents and abilities. We rely on him. This is where we are going to trust, rest, and wait. And we will have continuous breakthrough. So everybody got this? Very vitally important. Verse 19. It says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have what? Continue with us. But they didn't continue with us because they didn't abide themselves. Everybody all right? But they went out that they might be what? Made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing and you know what? You know what? All things. You know what? All things. Your continuance will keep his continuance. Has everybody got it? You will endure 
and have breakthrough because the anointing breaks all bondages. Breakthrough is not wealth. It is revelation of him, the riches of knowing him, and trials and tribulations and favor. Continuous breakthrough. There's no reason or excuse why we should not have continuous breakthrough. Amen? The word says make no place for the devil, right? Well, then don't make a place for him. Don't set a table for him at your dinner. Keep him out. Abide, abide, abide. Trust, rest, and wait. And don't lean on your own understanding. And I guarantee you, you'll have continuous breakthrough. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you all a glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. Oh, we thank you for our trials and tribulations. Knowing they produce your character in us and allows us another opportunity of breakthrough. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness in every area where we have gone backwards instead of forwards, trusted in ourselves instead of you. We commit to you our works and we acknowledge you in all of our ways. That way may be pleasing to you and a sweet aroma to you. Let this word be imparted, protected by the blood of the Lamb and let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Prepare your hearts for communion, please.